For carbon emitters, the way to pay will be to come to the exchange and purchase carbon credits. It's a market solution to world pollution. Mark Franklin believes that rising carbon prices will punish the polluters and force them to clean up their act. If we use up more and more of the Earth's environment, and so what the what will in effect happen as there will be less credits available, the price of a credit will be higher, and it'll even be more of a price signal. The higher the price moves, the more innovation will occur in the world to limit emissions. Aiming to be green and clean, New Zealand is trying to increase renewable energy and curb emissions from transport. But its great challenge is agriculture. This booming industry is the major source of pollution. The big challenge for us is the 50% of our greenhouse gas emissions which comes from our agricultural sectors because that's the backbone of our economy. At Lincoln University, the government is pumping money into research on emissions from cows. We've collected large columns of soil from the Lincoln University dairy farm in order to allow us to measure the effects of agriculture on the environment. Over half of our greenhouse gas emissions come from agriculture, and of that, one third is a gas called nitrous oxide, predominantly from animal urine deposited on the pasture and soil. And nitrous oxide, as you, as you know, is a potent greenhouse gas. It has a long-term uh, global warming potential 310 times that of carbon dioxide. And so it's a, a major issue for us as a country to reduce this greenhouse gas emission, this nitrous oxide emission. After 10 years, the scientists have found a way of inhibiting the effects of the nitrogen. And a commercial product has emerged from their research. Sprayed onto pasture land twice a year, it massively reduces the nitrous oxide gas. So here we are recording a 75% reductions in the nitrous oxide emissions from the urine patch areas. Nitrous oxide only accounts for a sixth of New Zealand's animal emissions. At this government-funded experimental farm, Harry Clark is in charge of a high-priority research program, which has also destroyed a popular myth. We don't have a large population, we don't have a lot of heavy industry, but we have this other problem which for many years people didn't realise was a problem, which are these lovely cattle and sheep. They produce methane, despite popular myth it, it's not coming out of the rear end, it is about 99% of the methane comes in the breath. Experiments show that 42% of New Zealand's methane emissions are exhaled by sheep, cows and other ruminants like goats, deer and llamas. Research in every part of this area is still at an early stage. It's cutting edge and at the same time we constantly rediscover very simple basic questions that people should have answered 20 or 30 years ago and so we're still addressing those questions to try and understand the whole system so we can take it apart and then put it back together so that it functions the way we want it to without producing the methane. In 2003, the issuing of methane became a serious political issue. When the government realised that in fact we did have no solution to methane emissions from belching cows and sheep, uh, they felt that we needed to actually start raising some money and investing in research and development. And so they decided that the best way to do that was to actually tax farmers. The current government proposed to charge a levy on every farmer based on the number of animals they had, uh, and the farmers revolted. We don't make the, farm tax, the fight tax was the fight against ridiculous taxes. We had uh, quite a few hundred people that marched down the road in Wellington. There was tractors and trucks and and farmers. But we're showing the government something, aren't we? Aye. And uh, we all converged on parliament buildings and one of the opposition MPs got one of the small tractors there and attempted to drive it up the steps of parliament for which he was duly charged by the police for behaving in an unseemly manner and uh, yeah eventually we got what we wanted. Clearly we don't know how long it's going to take for the science to make an impact. It, it will depend on particular discoveries and it's likely to happen uh, a bit at a time uh, rather than suddenly eureka. The truth is that we're only starting to nail the science of how to measure 
the amount of methane and nitrous oxide from agricultural production systems. And I think it is a matter of decades rather than years before there will be the sort of breakthroughs that enable us to bring those emissions back. New Zealand will have to plant a lot of trees to offset future decades of farmyard emissions. Initial estimates would suggest uh, that we would need over the next 20 odd years uh, to, to offset the methane problem in, in our pastoral industry. I think it's somewhere between one and two million hectares of afforestation would be needed. Two million hectares is 7% of New Zealand's entire landmass. Even the greenest of greens wonder if it is doable. It's wonderful to have a big exciting goal like carbon neutral, but it means no net carbon emissions at all from New Zealand and I don't see how we're ever going to achieve that, um, certainly not within my lifetime. I think the story of New Zealand is actually a wake up call. Anybody who says that the transition is going to be easy is wrong. Uh, this stuff is really hard and whether you're New Zealand, whether you're the United Kingdom, whether you're China or the US, we've got some really hard yards ahead of us if we're going to be able to beat global warming. I'm just so thrilled that New Zealand's getting a lot of recognition offshore for being out front on a lot of these issues. We're just so happy to be hosting World Environment Day this year because we can showcase a lot of the positive developments here in policy and action to make our country more sustainable. New Zealand is seeking to show the world the way to a sustainable carbon neutral future. But no one ever said it's easy to be green. <laughs>